Well, the channel is called Explorations in Mixed Media. So in that vein, we are going to be making a design by um, this person right here. Timurai, I think is her name. Anyways, it's a, a mask um, for the reduction of droplet transmission, not a medical device. Very important. Um, droplet transmission is the reason why they recommend you sneeze into your um, into your elbow. It reduces the spread of droplets, so it makes it safer if you are a non-symptomatic carrier of um, a, or even if you are a symptomatic carrier of a particular um, uh, illness, then you will have a smaller radius of impact for droplet transmission. So that's the other thing that's important when you're doing this thing, physical distancing or social distancing, is what you're trying to do is you're trying to um, keep the virus from being able to spread by introducing physical distance that the virus has to travel in order to get to another host. So I think Los Angeles just recently um, uh, made a declaration that they should uh, everybody should um, wear a face mask when they're out in public. It's been happening in China for years and years, actually. I mean, um, it is all commonplace that if you um, if you're sick, you wear a mask when you go out in public. It's just it's just courtesy. So, anyways, um, let's uh, let's for those of you who have never sewed before, um, this is a little introduction. And um, yeah, so let's get started. How do you read um, a pattern? Well, there are a couple of things to notice here. This dotted line, that is where your sewing is going to occur. And the solid line is where you cut out the fabric. Um, the space between the dotted line and the outside where your fabric is cut is called the seam allowance. And in this design, there are um, a left hand and a right hand, A and B. And uh, you want to, and so there's going to be also a front side, and then there's a back side to fabric. And then there's also, the, in this case, um, it's going to be um, both an outside and an inside fabric, an exterior fabric and a lining. And those fabrics can be different. You can make the exterior fabric um, uh, something that is decorative, and you make the interior fabric something that is um, comfortable against the face, so lining. Since it's going to have a pocket in it, separated by this seam, unfortunately, what you can do is you can also introduce a new, another filter material in between the two layers of fabric, and I might do a bit of that. And any kind of filter material like um, vacuum bags would be valuable in terms of reducing the um, droplet size that will actually get through the mask. Um, now, of course, droplets can still get out the edges, and when you're breathing in, it's going to be drawing air underneath the sides of the mask. So you're not going to be able to completely eliminate um, the actual, uh, filter out any of the actual pathogens. But, you know, it, it's all a matter of percentages. Washing hands isn't perfect. You still wash your hands. Um, so, anyways, yeah, let's get started. The first, I'm just going to make a sim, uh, one to trial for size. I'm just going to take some t-shirt material, an old t-shirt, cut it up, and um, sew it up, and we can uh, take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so we have our two sides cut out. Um, it says cut one in main fabric, I'm going to call that exterior, and cut one in lining. Um, cut one in main and cut one in lining. Now, <clears throat> These are going to be symmetrical. Most things are, should be symmetrical. Most things in sewing are. These aren't. Don't know why. Probably because of some weirdness in... Uh, in... Uh, well, I'm, some somebody have a odd-shaped face? I don't know. Anyways, you could actually just use one of these and then cut, flip it over to cut it. Another way of doing that is you take a fold in your fabric, and then you have the rights and the and the and the left, uh, the front and the back of the fabric. Um, the backs are together, and the fronts are in the opposite side. I'll show you. Okay, so we've got a fold in the fabric here. If you put your pattern on the fabric. 
and then cut that out, you'll have two pieces, one mirror of the other. So we do that twice and we've got our inside and our outside. So we could do four layers of fabric and cut things once, which it means that everything will be exactly the same size. So by doing, to do that, you would just flip the fabric over like that. And so now you're going to be making four pieces out of one set of cuts, out of one pattern, and that will give you all four pieces for the main part of your mask. Okay, so the other thing to think about is in some designs, the, um, the pattern on the fabric might make a difference. Um, the reason why I like to do this kind of a uh, cut when you have two pieces is that it gives you a better alignment between the two different patterns on both sides. So if I was cutting this, for instance, um, both sides would have, you would be able to sort of match up the pattern on either side of this seam so that it looks more uniform and you would have the lines coming in from the sides. But um, your pattern, your fabric might be different. This is just plain white, so it really doesn't matter. And then all you're looking at is what's known as the, um, the bias of the fabric. So that is which direction, is, some fabrics are stretchy in all directions, some are stretchy in one, some are stretchy in two. T-shirt material is um, uh, a knit, so it's stretched in all directions. It stretches in all directions. So if you were going to get really fancy, you would transfer the pattern onto something like um, tissue paper or tracing paper because it makes it easier to pin onto fabric without introducing any twists and buckles in the fabric and it just means that the um, the end product comes out um, a little more uh, faithful to the pattern but you know this is just a test so I'm just using the the paper pattern here not a big deal okay so now we've got our fabric cut out there should be four layers there one, two, three, four. Yep. And they'll have um, the orientation we've got um, at the top. And on the back, we have the outside of the fabric. And then there will be a layer where it's flipped. So you've got the, the insides of the, of the fabrics together. And then on the top layer, you've got the inside of the fabrics touching together. And so we have two pairs of uh, pattern. So now it's set up the sewing machine, or if you've got no sewing machine, you're going to be sewing it by hand, which isn't too bad because this is very, very small. But I'm just going to set up the sewing machine so I can whip a couple of these out. It literally does not matter how many bobbins you have. You will never have one with the right thread. On my machine, the thread comes through the bobbin through that slot, and then you pull it down so that it is coming out of that notch there. It just slips in between that tension and um, spring, that tension spring there, and just slips down in there. And you insert the bobbin so that it unrolls this way. So on this machine, oh, I'm gonna run out of, eh, it'll be close enough. On this machine, the threading pattern is across the front down to the tension wheel. This adjusts the top thread tension up to the, um, I don't know what you call this, but it's connected to the, to the uh, foot and it goes up and down, you'll see. Um, down through here and then through the needle, the needle has a flat on the back and when you insert the needle, the um, orients the, the hole going through this way, not through this way, coming through this way. Thread from the front to the back and then clip it into there and then also you should probably adjust the thread so that it, it's going through there to keep it safe. Sorry, hook it around there. And then you want the sewing, want to catch the bottom thread. And you do that just by manually rotating the, uh, the needle through one revolution and it pulls the bottom thread up through the top. And that is now ready for sewing. 
Okay, I did a couple of test stitches. That is the back stitch. And that is the front stitch. It looks pretty even in terms of tension. So yeah, ready to roll. Okay, so I've pulled the one pair of uh, the fabrics off of the um, off of the stack that I cut. Now, these, if there were a right side and a wrong side that was obvious, are wrong sides together or, or insides together. So what you would do is you would, first of all, take them apart and put the right sides facing each other. And what you'll see why in a mo moment, because we're going to turn that inside out after we're done sewing it, and then that seam is going to be an outside seam. Uh, this seam is going to be sitting on the inside. So that is now what we are going to sew together, and the first sewing line we make is along here. If you were being particularly um, precious with doing this, you might actually um, mark your seam along here, but I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, got some registration marks on the machine so that gives you a sense of of where your seam allowance is and this is a very narrow seam allowance so it's even inside of this 3 8 or 10 10 millimeter marking here so it looked like to me probably hmm, what is that six millimeters so maybe half that and we want a, a narrow seam allowance because we um we don't want a lot of bulk in the front, especially because that's going to be riding on the nose. Um, another way of doing that would be cutting more seam allowance into your cut and then cutting, trimming it back after you're done sewing it. But let's just go with the um, small seam allowance for now. Okay, so now when we turn it inside out, we'll have our mask shape established and so this will come down the cheek that sits over the nose how's it fit I think it's going to be too small for my face but that is why you uh, that's why you make tests might be good for a smaller person okay so we need to do that one more time and then that will, uh, out of the lining material. Okay, so now we have our two pieces. And then we put right sides together. So that means the this seam, the right sides are, are together. And nose piece up with no nose piece oh, no that's backwards because now we're going to create a tube out of these pieces So we put right sides together. I'm matching up that corner. And let me just throw a couple of pins in there and maybe I can show what's going to happen. So line up those seams. If, you, if you're if you going to be really precious about it, you would open up that seam and press it on, on an iron. But <clears throat> to heck with that. So in any event, we get this thing into a tube, and then when we turn this tube inside out, it will have these seams captured on the inside, and we can turn it inside out because we're leaving both ends open. And we leave both ends open because that's where we're going to attach the, um, the strings to it. So, make sense? Let's sew this part up. Now I am going to keep this seam together with a few pins while I'm sewing it because it's just going to make life easier. Okay, so I just 
join those two together with a bunch of pins. That just keeps it together so I don't have to be working so hard while I am sewing it and keeping the seams together. It just will hold it there together for me while I am doing the actual sewing. And then as I, as I sew, I'll pull those pins out. enough. Okay, so there we have both seams done and now we just turn it inside out and the inside seams will become outside seams and vice versa. And you will get something that actually has nice looking seams on the outside and it has a, a a flat seam on the inside to go against your face. Something that looks like that. And yeah, this thing's tiny. It needs to be at least 20% bigger. So <clears throat> the next step is putting um, elastics in here or ties. You could you could do either, but uh, I'm not going to put anything in this one because I'm going to cut some new fabric in a bit larger size so that um, I actually have a, a mask that actually is going to work. Way too small for me. All right, onwards. Okay, so I put another piece of paper down. Oops, focus. I put another piece of paper down. I'm gonna extend something like um, another, I don't know, centimeter on that side. And I'm gonna come up on a bit of a steeper angle so that I get more length around here is really what I'm going for. Because that has to, that seam actually goes along over top of your nose and then in front of your mouth and then you want it to come down underneath your chin basically to cover up your mouth so it sits on top of your nose but it needs to I think it needs to cover your chin in order to look good so here we go okay I had to make it even a size larger but I think I've got um, it pretty close to the right size and now I'm working on the attachment. So I, I tried it with a couple of elastics. So I tried the elastic, but that didn't seem to work um, all that well. So took, oh, I need to trim that. Took it apart <clears throat> and sewed in a couple of ties, and that seems to work better. But I am not necessarily um, happy with this design. I'm probably going to try another design. And also, I um, if you don't have any strings that are suitable for ties. There is another thing you can do. You can make um, what's called um, bias tape, and I'll show you that in a sec. So bias tape is basically just um, a, a strip of fabric that has been folded over twice so that you've got um, seams that meet um, in the center, and then you fold that over over top of the edge of a fabric, and you can um, s tighten up the end of a fabric that way. I neaten up the end of the fabric that way. But how do you effectively fold the fabric over? Well, um, you can use something called a bias tape guide. And what it is, is it takes a U-shape on one side and it turns it into something that's folded over on the other side. And then you just iron it so that it stays in place. And then that gives you your folded over tape seam, uh, folded over tape. And then that whole thing can fold over to then that whole thing can fold over to enclose a seam, or you can just fold it in half and sew it, and then that gives you a 
that gives you a um, like a tie, which which is all nice and neatly um, contained. So, how does that work? Well, this one is a a little larger, but you can see the idea. It uh, it goes in one side as a U shape, and then it comes out the other, folded like that. And so you just put your iron down there to keep it ironed, and you get a nice seam tape. So you get something that looks like that, and then you can just fold it over and sew it like, fold it over and sew it like that, and then you get um, a tie. And depending on the size of your yoke, you can make different widths. So this is sized for a five um, centimeter uh, yoke. And this is sized for a four centimeter um, strip of fabric. So that perimeter there is four centimeters and it comes out folded a little narrower than that one. Sorry, the black's kind of hard to see, but the blue you can actually see. So yeah, handy little thing to print out. So there you go, that's um, folded over and then I would just run, um, uh, run a seam down there and you would have a nice tie that you could use rather than um, shoelace material and the fabric would be more pleasant on the skin. Anyways, that's it for this one. Um, I'm going to try another pattern in the next video and as always, thanks for watching and um, catch you later. Stay away from each other and just like two Aaron say, wash your hands. You filthy animals. Bye for now.